Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yusuf, and in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only cardboard box spray catchers. Welcome to the first of the Hydra painting videos. We've got most of the assembly work done, so we can start mucking about with the fun stuff now. On the right, you can see one of my hellhounds. That's essentially the thinnest colour scheme that we're shooting for with this Hydra. It's basically going to be a drab, dark green. Not quite Dark Angels, but a more NATO-ish, foresty tone. However, undercoat is done, so we can put that to one side moment because there's a technique I need to illustrate. And yes, that piece of masking tape is my aiming point. Why do you ask? Let's tighten the zoom on the Hellhound for a second. Bring it in, there we go. Okay, so as things stand, the scene is actually lit mostly from the front, so it's fairly even as far as the camera is concerned. You can see that all the colours are more or less the same. It's all a fairly even dark green. In fact, it is an even dark green. However, watch what happens when I switch the lighting off. Okay, so the model is now lit purely from above and slightly behind. You can see that the top of the model is still identifiably dark green, but the sides are now so deep in shadow that they're practically black. This is a reflection of a little point about Mother Nature. In the great outdoors, there's only typically one light source, the sun, and that's so far away as to basically be a point source. So, how are we going to replicate this with the model? Well, let's switch the lighting back for a moment and bring the zoom out. Bring the zoom out, I said, not in. 100 millimeters, tighten down to 70, there we go. Pull the hand away. Well, the first step actually happened with the undercoat. Most of the model is done in Halford's grey. I actually prefer this over the workshop sprays as my basic undercoat. It's a neutral compromise between black and white as far as the brightness of the overlaying colours is concerned, and it doesn't hurt that it's actually significantly cheaper than the rest of the workshop paint range. The other point is that the underside of the main hull, which is mostly going to be in shadow, I have actually undercoated in black, and then on the upper side, once that had dried, I went for it in grey. The end result is that the areas of the side of the miniature that are mostly in shadow have retained some of the black and will hopefully give a slightly darker finish on any overlaying colours. So, time to start putting base coats on. Our first base coat is going to be Castellan Green. This is, as you can see, workshops fairly standard base colour. It's an, I hesitate to say olive drab because it's not quite, there's a, not quite enough brown in it to be olive, but it's reasonably close and forms a decent basis for a camouflage shade. So, respirator on. Check the fit, check the seals. And we are good to go, so. Airbrush set for 35 psi. Check the field and right, so paint pre mixed. Did a lot of my prep work offhand. I hope I'm not going to have to do too much audio correction for this because I'm actually having to shout to keep the volume level the same through the mask. Uh, you can do quite a nice Bane impersonation if you're in the mood for these and if you've got the accent for it. Unfortunately, I haven't. So, airbrush into play. And screw. As you can see, paint is as I once said, roughly the consistency of skin milk. That may even be a little thicker than I wanted, but not to worry. One airbrush, dual action, so push to trigger, and then I can rock back and forwards to set the paint. We're going to do the lower half of the model first, for reference's sake, so I can just let that dry. 
the lower levels will be staying pretty much straight Castellan Green all the way through this, at least in theory, so I don't need to worry about it not being damp for the next stage. Why does it need to be damp for the next stage? You will see. So, load the pot. And then when it's green here, it is tripping over the hose at this point, would be really, really bad. So if we do a test spray, just the back, and make sure we're actually getting a colour, which we are, good. Okay, so, miniature time. Okay, one brief pause to clean the airbrush later and we're back in business. Unfortunately, airbrushes are fickle little beasts at the best of times. Their machine spirits are capricious and they must be properly maintained. Anyhow, mask on and back on the painting run. So. Okay, so fast forward a few hours and everything has properly dried, it can now be safely handled. So next step is to plug everything together. And yes, this includes the turret workings, which I'll be doing metallic later, so I don't care if these particularly get covered in green paint at the moment. They're going to get enough of a paint job elsewhere that it is highly unlikely to matter. Quietly reassemble the guns. Just loosely. Don't need to have them fully on. In fact, it would be better if they aren't. So just leave a bit of a gap there. Don't push them all the way home. And likewise, the other side of the turret. Basic miniature is assembled. Basics are in place and we can now start the next phase. So we're going to need a way of easily rotating the miniature without touching it too much. And absent a proper turntable, take a spray can lid, flip it over and mount. And you now have something you can use just to turn the miniature. Very blue Peter, but it works. Proper turntable would be better, of course, but hey, budget's a budget. And I blew quite a lot of it on something else this week, so can't go for that. So, base coat, to remind you, was Castell and Green. Next coat is a layer of Lauren Forest. Again, this is thinned down, and again, it is going to be airbrushed on. The difference is, is that we're only going to be airbrushing from the top of the miniature. So in effect, it will come down, it will act as though light is hitting the miniature and then picking out the upper surfaces, while the lower surfaces will hopefully stay mostly Castello. The other thing we're going to do 
Yes, is put down a quick layer of Castellan Green first. That will just help ensure that any transitions, any side panels, for example, that aren't quite in shadow, but aren't getting full whack of the light either, will get a gradual transition from Castellan to Lauren, and hopefully just blending the effect together to give us a slightly more natural look on the miniature. Let's just uh, load the airbrush with the castell and what's left of it. And then, get the presser. Yeah, 35 to 40 percent, I should do it quite nicely. So, we've got, got colour coming through. And we can now move on to the next phase, which means we have to very rapidly flush out what's left of the Castellan Green in the airbrush. Quickest way to do that and to load the Lauren Green at the same time is to rack up the pressure, dip in some Lauren Green, and then just burn to cardboard. Wasteful, but at least it allows you to judge the colour transition as it comes through. Miniature time again! Hmm. Hope this works. Airbrush position so that it is somewhat high above the visual. I don't risk this hitting the shadowed surfaces. And also, I might have a loop somewhere at this thing. I just have to be careful. So there we go. It's a relatively subtle effect, but you'll agree it's there. Particularly if we swing around and have a look at the interior of the gun plate where no paint should have gotten to. Just in here, you can see the dark green there and the light green on the upper surfaces. What I might do off camera is go back again once this has dried and give it a coat of straight Lauren because even the upper surfaces will have blended slightly with the Castellan layer I just put down. So that will push the effect another stage further. And in fact, I think I might do that. But as I say, that will happen off camera. So next time we'll start looking at individual details on the miniature. We'll start looking at water slide transfers and generally bringing things up to a factory finish Hydra. And hopefully you'll join me. Until then, farewell.